Okay, so once again, uh, good afternoon and for the newcomers, welcome to uh, Advanced System Design and Implementation. So this time, what we're going to discuss is about the unified modeling language. No? So we are all uh, familiar with this since a uh, majority of students enrolled in uh, Master's in IT program, of course, are a uh, graduate of BS IT and BS in Computer Science or either BSIS or Computer Engineering. But some engineering courses are actually also have a subject which covered uh, system analysis design, software engineering, and so on. So for today, again, uh, we're, we're going to discuss about unified modeling language. No? So developers can specify, no, visualize, create, and document the artifacts of a software system using the unified modeling language. So a standardized modeling language. So as a result, UML renders these artifacts executable, secure, and scalable. So the creation of object-oriented software include UML as a key component. It produces a visual presentation or representation of software using graphic notification. So uh, the UML, of course, covered no, uh, some uh, tech, te techopedia explain unified, some techopedia explain unified modeling language. So when it comes to the, that uh, information, no, <clears throat> a standardized modeling language is called uni unified modeling language. So the meta object facility, which established the framework of developing modeling languages is the cornerstone of the UML architecture. They can generate the whole application because they are accurate enough. A, complete, a completely executable uh, UML may be used with all procedure during the software development life cycle and can be deployed to various platforms using various technologies. And to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our presenter, Sir Christian. Go ahead, sir. So, good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon, sir. So, I honor for you to report the introduction to Unified Modeling Language. So, my dear classmates, I'm sir, um, I introduce myself. My name is Ralph Christian Bularda. Um, I'm a MIT student. So, introduction to Unified Modeling Language. So, in short, to IML. So, as sir Abel said earlier, so, to discuss an overview of what is UML all about. In this topic, we will discuss the UML and the history. Then, um, overview. So, when you say overview, um, first, um, what is modeling? So, I will discuss this, what is modeling. Then, what is UML or Unified Modeling Language? Then, a brief history of UML and understand the basic of UML. So we, as an IT um, professionals, we always need this UML. So UML diagram and UML modeling tool. So in overview, um, we have five components, sir. The modeling and what is the UML and the brief history. So modeling. So modeling describe a system at a high level of abstraction. So when you see UML, uh, imagine yourself um, building or creating something or creating building or creating a system. Without the help of the UML, it's hard for us to develop. Since, um, for example, I'm give a scenario that you are creating a building. The first thing you need to do is to create a blueprint. So, you know, in UML, um, it helps us to uh, build a system in, a, in the easy way. So use for requirements and specification. So object oriented modeling. So in the in the past seven piece um the evolution of object oriented development method or the first the structured programming no? and then structured programming to the objective uh, object oriented programming. So in the early scientists. So in the history um then what is UML? So um stands for unified modeling language. It's an industrial standard graphical language for specifying 
visualizing, constructing, and documenting the artifacts of a software system. So as I said earlier, so when you are trying to develop something, a system, so the first step you need to do um, is to have uh, to visualize what you are trying to, to develop. So URL will help you to do that. So uh, the URL use mostly graphical notations. So you want the, the graphical notations to express the object-oriented analysis and design a software project. So uh, simplify the complex process. So this complex process will be simplified process of a software design using the UML. So why UML for modeling? So why do we need uh, to, to use the UML for modeling? Use graphical notation um, to communicate more clearly with the natural language, emphasize and code to detail. So for more uh, clicking, for example, um, I said earlier, um, you are trying to develop a system, for example, um, database management system. So in order for you to create that, um, you will use a model or a, a, a diagram first before you, you try to code. Helps acquire an overall view of a system. So it will help you to acquire the overall view of your system. UML is not uh, dependent on any one language or technology. So it helps a lot of us um, to depend um, it's yet not just on one, but uh, from the segmentation to the standardization. UML moves us from segmentation to standardization, as I said earlier, no? So, um, history of the UML. So, as you can see uh, in the graph, so from the segmentation to the industrial, industrialization, so UML, UML helps. So, from that earlier, um, the other methods, the Borch 21, your MP, the OSS, coming to the unification and then going through standardization and industrialization. So UML helps all that. So a brief history. So UML is an object-oriented unified modeling language. It was invi uh, invented, Invented by a brilliant uh, software engineers. So, say, uh, Grady Wood, Eber Jacobson, and James, James Roberts of the Rational Software during the 90s. So, during the 1990s, 1994 and 1995, to be exact, it was under development until the 1996. So, HUML inventors, this Grady Wood, Eber Jacob, and James, and James Roberts. And a fantastic idea for designing a language which will reduce the complexity. So it will reduce the complexity technique for the same terms. No? So see, the Bosch method, um, it focused the very flexible to work with a jur during the design and the construction of the of the object. So in Bosch method, that will be focused the flexible on the construction of the object. While the Jacobson method uh, provides a great way to work around a use case, uh, it also has a powerful approach for high level design. So, the use case and uh, diagram. And then the Roberts method turned out to be very useful while handling a sensitive system. So, these three brilliant uh, software engineers are the ones who create the unified modeling language during the 90s. So, types of the UML diagram. So I believe you're all familiar of this diagram. First is the use case diagram and class diagram and sequence diagram, collaboration diagram, set diagram. This is only the subject diagram, but that's why we use. So this is the common use versus actually the use case diagram. So use case diagram, used for describing a set of uh, uh, user scenarios. So later, I will do the example. No? Um, mainly, used for capturing user requirements. Work like a contract between end user and the software developers. So say end users and the software developers are uh, using the use case diagram. So here, um, the core components, so first, you have an actors and they use case. So a role 
that users play with respect to the system, including human users and other system uh, inanimate physical objects, so robots and etc. An external system that needs some information from the current system. Then she uses a set of scenario. So uses a set of scenario that describing an interaction between a user and the system. So she uses a interaction between a user and the system, including the, inter the alternative. So you can see the actor and the use case. It's a system boundary, and um, it's kind of the ground in the boundary between the actor and the system. To her, the association, the association of com communication between an actor and the use case are represented by a solid line. So the solid line that um, I did that, that represents as uh, yes, uh, association. And in generalization, a relationship between one general use case and a special use case used for defining a specific alternative. So in association, I put an example. For example, a bank register account association comes to below. So the bank and the account tongue, the accountant. So, wait lang po, nag-push yung ano video ko. Ayan. So, use case diagram for relationship. So, include. So, a dotted line level include. So, as you can see, beginning at this use and ending with an arrows. Pointing to the include use case. That include relationship appears when a chunk of behavior is similar across more than one use case. So, more than one use case. Use include, and instead of copying of description of the behavior, so since include the dash then then in the arrow in the line, then we'll say extend a dotted line level extend with an arrow toward the base case, the extending use case by adding the behavior to the use case, uh, base plus declare extension point that extend. So here an example of no use case diagram. So we can see the boundary a generalized description of how a system will be used. So here is a generalized description no? to provide us an overview of the intended functionality of the system. So the actor and the use case. So client can borrow and file remittance. The employee borrow and order title in you know, a financial remittance. The supervisor the order title and the financial remittance. So, sample of how use case diagram works for order for us um, um, to show the description of how a system will be used. A class diagram are the most important kind of UML or unified modeling language. Diagram and are vitally important in a software development. So as I said earlier, so imagine yourself creating a system or a, a, a building or what or a system. So you, in order for you, to, before you create a system, you must first create a model. So a model will be used as a blueprint of your system before you uh, proceed um, programming or coding. So a class diagram, are the best way to illustrate a system structure. So a class diagram uh, in a detailed way, showing its attributes, operation, as well as it is interrelationship. So you see the class diagram, no? So a class diagram represents the classes, the types of objects in a system, together with relationship that exists between them. Class diagram can be used in different stages of development. So her, in class diagram, uh, using uh, UML, which is the most important no, uh, while developing a software. So una, uh, the conceptual modeling. So conceptual modeling of the problem domain, possibly including entities that are external to the final development system, but that interact with it. So 
All of this thing about is interact with it. The analysis, modeling, recording in a precise but implementation independent manner the grid requirements on the system in analyzing modeling. Then, while the design modeling, detailing the design structure of the system, dependency between the classes of the system. So, the three, the concept, the, the conceptual, the analysis, and then the style. So, last diagram. Use for describing structure and a behavior in the use case. As I said earlier, uh, provide a conceptual model of the system uh, in terms of entities and their relationship. So, here at the conceptual, no? Then, use for requirements capture and user interaction. So, the capture between the end user interaction. Detailed class diagram are used for developers. So, uh, we developers, um, class diagram um, like we use. Class representation. So each class is represented by a rectangle sub subdivided into three com uh, compartments. So we can see here the name and the attributes and the operation. So on that, uh, modify are used to indicate the severity of attributes and operation. So the plus uh, sign is used to, de to denote public visibility to everyone. Uh, and the uh, hash, the number sign is used to denote protected visibility friend on the derived. So the, the sign is used to denote private visibility to no one. So by default, that the attributes are hidden and operation uh, operations are available. So in the class the presentation, so there are name attributes and operations. So uh, the sample. So here's the example of the percentage uh, of the rectangular divided of the three com the compartment. So the name and the attributes and their operation. So the account name, which is the no, name, then the attributes, which is the the uh, customer name and the operation, which is the the funds or the or transfer product, but we can uh, do something uh, different in the operation, no? Then the OO relationship or object oriented relationship. So there are two kinds of relationship. So first, as I said uh, earlier, uh, the, uh, the association and the generalization. So when we say generalization, uh, certain child relationship, then association um, is student enrolls in course. So association can be further classified. So the association uh, take note can be uh, further classified as aggregation and composition. So here are the example. No? So in general, generalization expresses uh, the parent child uh, relationship among related classes. So as you can see, uh, the super type and the super type one and type B an example of the system. So customer, regular customer, and the loyalty is under the customer. So all the regular customer and the loyal customer are the customer, used for abstracting data in several layers. Then, here, represent relationship between instances of classes. So here the scenario, instances. So first, a uh, student enrolls in a course, and course have a student, in course have an exam. So an association has two ends, role names, multiplicity, uh, the multiplicity one course can be have many students. So the one course can have many students, so it's one to many. So and now the visibility under the rational of the with the reactional. So here is the example. So and multiplicity mandatory. So from the UML, no? so as you can see that, in the name, uh, level, order, the attribute and the operation, then the association, the association level, and the customer of the class, and this is customer, then the cooperative customer constraint. This constraint is the condition of the, uh, not, not the of the position. 
to multiple cities, the employee, and then the product. The online uh, order line, so meaning values to the order capacity. Then, uh, in sequence diagram, for example, making or make a phone call. So, caller um, pick up the phone, then the recipient uh, dial, then uh, the ringtone ring, wrong, then pick up, then um, her response by the recipient. So, it's a sample of the sequence diagram. So, sequence diagram and object interaction. So, self call. A message that an object sends to itself. So, when you say self call, it's a message that an object sends to itself. Condition indicates when a message is sent, the message is sent only if the condition is true. So, in constraint, um, you, you are the one to set the condition. Then, if the condition goes true, then the message will be sent. So, in if uh, the condition here, uh, condition removed, interaction for H, remove, then self, then not true, self, full. Then, sickness diagram again, self, uh, object life span. So, creation, uh, first, uh, create message, object life uh, start at that, point, at that point. So, in activation, so, symbolized by a rectangular stripe, Angular stripe based on the lifeline where object is activated. Rectangle also denotes when object is deactivated. So here, the B. Then deletion, placing the X on the life span, object life ends at that point in this scenario. You know. So here, the example of the sequence uh, diagram of object life span. So uh, state diagram. So when you say the diagram, it should the sequence sequences of the state an object goes through during its life cycle in response to stimuli, stimuli together with its responses and action and abstraction of all possible behavior. So here you start, then invoice has been created, but get not paid. So it uh, show unpaid. Then paying, then after the paying, uh, shows paid, then invoice source, then the conditions end. So start and end. So state, state diagram um, is very simple to understand for us. So. Then, given modeling tools rational. So, um, here, uh, UML. So, the question is, why do we need to use this uh, diagram? This this type of UML diagram. So by using this uh, UML diagram, uh, we can actually, we can have a uh, overview of what our system will look like. So as of the moment, um, we are not yet creating a system. So the first thing we need to do is to develop a diagram in order for us to have an overview. So as I said earlier, my example is when you are creating a building. So when you are creating a building, you are not just making uh office again, I will build this, I will build that without prior uh without prior study or without prior investigation or without um the model or the blueprint. So a new ML itself help, uh, help us then so so by that um this this um you have L modify language so those rational rules so the no the reference together sub control center the abu uh, uml the press over so we can search that um that, that link is open source in java others then reference the acknowledgement the slide material are taken from different source including that i know then on that um my report is very short, but the uh, overview and the abstract of UML that gave us the ideas 
on how and why we need to use UML. Those are a lot of modeling. So, um, as I said earlier, um, UML uh, will help us to have an uh, overview prior our system development. So, UML um, has a lot of diagrams that we can use. Um, those are the your skip diagram, the social diagram, and and others. So on that, uh, sir, um, that's all of my reports about the unified modeling language. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> Again, as I mentioned earlier, no, uh. The unified modeling language, as our presenter mentioned, is a general purpose modeling language. So the main aim of the UML is to define a standard way to visualize no, the way a system has been designed. It is a quite similar to blueprint used in other fields of engineering. So UML is not programming language. No? It is rather a visual language. Now we use UML. Diagrams to portray the behavior and structure of a system and UML, of course, uh, helps software engineers, businesswomen or businessmen and systems architect with modeling design and analysis. No? So the object oriented, uh, the object management group or the OMG adopted UML as a standard no? and it has been managed the OMG ever uh, since now and uh, we, we really need this UML actually. Okay, so I think that's it.